Well, good afternoon, Magandang Hapon, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today is a special edition of My PI Dream. It's Sunday, and uh, today I was not going to push a video, but some of the subscribers said they were interested in seeing some of the projects that I actually put together back at my home in the U.S. Uh, I have several projects, and I actually have some a little bit of video, and, and I have uh, several pictures. And uh, so what I did today is I put together a slide presentation on a bathroom renovation that I did a few years back. And uh, basically it was a design that I had in my mind. The house had, n had never had anything change on the original design from when it was uh, uh, built by the, uh, the builder, which was D.R. Horton. And what I did was I had an idea that instead of painting the bathroom, everything like that, I knew that I was planning on doing a renovation. Uh, so I made a design while I was actually overseas uh, in the back of my mind and on some paperwork. And when I came back from one of my overseas tours, I, I gutted out the entire bathroom and I did a bathroom renovation based upon uh, my design. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy today. So I'm going to go through today's uh, uh, build process. And hopefully uh, if you're uh, in the same situation, you have a bathroom that you think is boring. And uh, maybe the, you'll get a few ideas from this right here. Excuse me for the, the, the roosters in the background. You're going to have to bear with them because it's actually late in the afternoon and I would have loved to have gone back out to the development where it's nice and quiet and sat by Hey Kubo and done this, but uh, a lot of folks wanted uh, this video to be pushed tonight, so I don't have time to be able to go there and get back here and uh, be able to get it out today. So anyway, please bear with me and uh, we're gonna go through the presentation. Anyway, let's start with what the, uh, the bathroom actually looked like plain. Uh, I actually, in, in this picture right here, I actually, already pulled out the the door there was a uh, it was like a fiberglass type of a tr uh, translucent door that was on the shower so the door is actually off already it, it was a uh, after I started this I'm like oh maybe I should start taking some some uh, pictures and, and videos like that so anyway so I started doing video, video just as some background information I started doing videos at the very beginning and I thought well I'm gonna make a, a archive of this right here but what ended up happening this this job was so intensive especially with, when it came to the tile work, any of the tile work. And this is on the second floor where I'm doing this. And I, and I, I didn't bring any of the equipment upstairs. I did uh, all the tile cutting and everything I did out in my garage. I probably made 3,000, if, if not more, trips up. And, I'm, I'm not joking. <laughs> 3,000 more trips up and down the stairs uh, carrying tiles. Individual tiles were uh, cut each individual one and brought it up there to do this, this job. And it was uh, quite time uh, involved and... Uh, but anyway, I, I think it came out pretty good, so I hope you enjoy it. So anyway, here is the before picture you'll see on the left, uh, the, the, the shower stall and the garden tub, and just the plain vanity, white walls, the, the, the fixtures that they normally do when they build a, a, a spec house in the U.S. Uh, it's not a custom built type of house, it's, it's, uh, and that's what we have. So the next slide here is actually going, and I'm starting to cut out uh, the... Uh, shower itself because what I'm doing the main part part of this renovation is the is the uh, shower uh, it basically it's going to be totally gutted and instead of being all the fiberglass plastic type of an installation it's going to be all in normal it's going to be a mud deck all tile and it's going to be some nice features and see as we go along I think some of these I have some vi video and let's see if we can cover we can hear the video Cutting a four inch uh, area around, all around the shower, and removed it so that I had access to the quarter corner of the, uh, the center corner. It's actually going to be behind the drywall, so I need to pull out the section right here. I'll pull out all the screws. And now that I have everything disconnected, the next step is to actually cut it into manageable pieces so that I can actually get the shower uh, assembly out of here using the downstairs. So that's what I ended up doing. I ended up getting a sawzaw, and I took the sawzaw and I cut it into, I don't know, five or six sections so that I could manage, manageably remove this from the wall. And from the bathroom and get and get it out. So we're, so I ended up gutting gutting the entire uh, old prefab uh, shower assembly. So let's go to the next slide. 
In the next slide you're going to see uh, I'm actually doing some preliminary plumbing for the bathtub and uh, so you'll see on the right hand side that's a I wanted like a waterfall effect of that type of a, uh, a water fixture that goes into the, the garden tub. So I picked up a Fister uh, and the Ashfield, I love it. It's all, all my fixtures, everything inside our house, all the hardware for the doors, the knobs, the, the bathroom, everything is all rub bronze. I changed everything out from the chrome stuff that was initially installed by the, uh, the, the, uh, the builder. And so let me see what I have okay. on this one. I went ahead and pulled the rest of the uh, on the drywall all the way up to the roof. I'm keeping this header and still and uh, just to keep this wall over here from shaking back and forth so I don't get any cracks and then once I put up the additional uh, header up above it I'll take out the old one uh, because that was set back because of the original uh, width of the uh, or the depth of the, of the shower. Um, I I was going to hire a plumber to come in and install, install the new uh, Fister uh, shower fixture, but I wasn't able to get a hold of one, so I went ahead and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do this myself. I got a, um, the new uh, tank kit, the solder, flux, and I'll go ahead and put all this together. I have it sitting in upside down to measure the uh, copper pipes that are going to fit in between them. I removed the cartridge. So that when I heat up the brass things, I don't burn up the part on the inside. So anyway, if if you're if you have not done any of this kind of stuff before, make sure that you actually do a lot of reading and a lot of re research. Anything that has to do with sweating pipes, or uh, when you actually get the fixtures in, make sure you read the instruction signs there, because the instructions will actually tell you so that you don't actually burn up any of the gaskets or anything like that, or the cartridges inside there. Uh, the proper way to do that, and I did that. I did the research on that. And after I did that, and I actually went on YouTube, and I learned how to sweat pipes and do some plumbing. I had never done uh, sweating pipes before, um, but it's really not that tough. And I actually had, I did have a plumber come in later on and check my, check my work, and he said it, the work was excellent. Uh, so, uh, um, again, if, you, if, if you're not a plumber and, it, uh, and you're worried about it, get a professional plumber to come in. But I personally, myself, I believe if... if uh, I like to challenge myself, so I tried it and I did it, and I was successful. And it's been it's been installed since uh, 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17. So it's been four years, and I haven't had a leak yet. So I've got my fingers crossed. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. And the next slide shows this is the, uh, the new diverter that I installed. Uh, I pulled out the the first uh, regular. All it was was for a shower head. And the original builder had done a horrible, horrible job of installing. I always wondered. The, the, the fixture, when you turn the water on, the fixture was always crooked inside there. And then you would always hear some rattling going on inside there. But when I pulled off all of the, uh, the wood uh, when ripped out the shower, uh, it, you, you'd be surprised at what you're going to find behind your walls uh, if you have some... Uh, it's, it, it was crazy what I saw. The things were not connected together. They, they were not attached to the, to the studs. Uh, they were improperly placed. Uh, it was it was just horrible. It was a nightmare that I saw, and, and stud spacing was all wrong in a, in a lot of different places. And not, it didn't seem like anything was to code. Uh, so anyway, I, I I made all the corrections when I went behind the scenes behind all the walls and took care of. But this is my diverter you'll see right here, and the diverter is actually used when it says a diverter. Uh, I, what I mean is it's going to divert water in different directions. So this will actually make it go through the shower head, or it will do the handheld wand that you can use. Other people get exotic and they put, you know, uh, uh, water shooting out from the side and all, like a spa kind of a thing. I, I didn't think uh, that was necessary. I, I, I've used those things before and it's a novelty, but the novelty wears off pretty fast. Just like in the garden tub, tub that has a jacuzzi. We have a jacuzzi in ours and we probably used it twice in the, in the uh, 10 years uh, that we've lived inside this house. So uh, anyway, we, we didn't get that. Let's go to the next slide. And the next slide, I've actually, uh, let's see what's I'm doing the uh, installed shower pad support of all the, uh, at the base for the walls. Uh, so, let's see. Oh, you'll see, so you'll see the, uh, the, the two by six a stud that's, or that, that goes along the bottom. That wasn't there before. So when you're pouring, when you're doing a shower pan, uh, what you have to do, you have to build up support uh, for where, you, where your concrete's going inside there because you're going to have uh, additional weight and everything like that. 
and it's, it's a protectionary measure inside there. And then frame in, this, uh, frame in for the shelf windows. So anyway, what you see right here, uh, on both sides, you see those two, it looks like uh, uh, four studs, two here, two over here, and, and the bottom to them, you see it's, it's clearer inside the right side, and you see on the left side, you'll see the top of the window. What that's going to be for, we're going to actually put some windows inside here. So this is the beginning of the framing for the windows. And we have, I had to actually build up uh, the, uh, so this, this flange in here for the floor drain, this is going to be for, the, uh, for the, the mud deck that we have inside here and the PVC liner that's going. And I'll show you as we go along how that actually gets installed. So I, I actually had to add an additional 5 8 inch worth of plywood inside there. Whenever you're putting all these concrete inside, the amount of wood that they had in there, and they had that, uh, oh, you know the wood that's made out of, it's like a composite, uh, I forgot the name uh, uh, of the, the type of wood that they have inside there, but it's actually kind of garbage. It's very cheap, and it's all glued together, and that's what they had inside here. So what I did was I beefed up the floor, uh, so it provided additional support for the additional weight that we're going to need for the uh, concrete mud deck. And then what I did was I framed in the, the doorway. This is a whole new doorway and, uh, for the size of the tempered glass door. And, I, and uh, the glass door, I think I have references for this later on, and I will show you uh, where, I, where I bought this. I think I ordered this through Amazon.com. Uh, but you have to be, this is very important when you're doing glass. Uh, everything has to be plumb. So I went out and I bought a Bosch laser, uh, uh, basically laser plumbing uh, uh, device, and it will give you, it is accurate within, it's like 164th of an inch. It is extremely accurate and that's how I actually lined up all my uh, my studs inside there for the for the doorway. And then you install underlayment. The underlayment is required inside there so that when you pour concrete, uh, your concrete mix for your base, you're going to have two different types of uh, uh, types of concrete, uh, two different types of mixes and what you're going to do, they're going to be below the PVC liner and above the PVC liner. So when you pour your first mix inside there, you have to make sure that you don't pour your concrete directly onto the wood. Uh, the wood will act like a wick and it will absorb all of the, the moisture and, and make your concrete uh, uh, less uh, strong. And uh, the integrity of the concrete will not be there. Plus, it will, it, it's not good for the wood because it'll end up riding your wood with the, wood, with, the uh, with the moisture inside there. So what you do is you put underlayment, underlayment down. And, and underlayment can be something as simple as uh, roofing, uh, roofing uh, material, which that was what I have here. Then you install wire mesh. Your wire mesh is going to be similar to what your rebar is when you're doing uh, structural support in, in a house, like the house that we're doing. Uh, but this is a very simple uh, part support for your, for your uh, mud deck, and uh, it's going to provide uh, something for the concrete to adhere to and not shift or move around. And then you see, this is a couple of pictures of what it looks like from a different vantage point, the, uh, the roofing paper and the wire mesh. Then, uh, now we have to do, we have to put a pre-pitch kit inside. You don't have to do a pre-pitch kit. If you are an expert and you've been doing this for a long time, uh, you can judge uh, your slope. You need to make sure that you have a slope that goes from the outer walls down to the pitch to where your, uh, where your drain is going to be in the center. Uh, I cheated, and I'm not, I mean, it's really not cheating. It's a way of getting a very accurate pitch inside there. Uh, again, this is my first, this is my first attempt at doing a uh, a, a shower uh, with uh, with with mud deck, so I wanted to make sure it was perfect. So this kit and the instructions come with it, and it's very simple and it's very accurate. And you'll see at the very end how well it turned out. Then you pour the concrete base. Uh, the concrete base is a it's it's a little bit of a drier of a mixture than you would normally do with normal concrete, and uh, and this is going to be go go underneath your PVC. And it's, it already has a slight slope because what's going to happen, you need to have a slope inside that you're going to say, oh, well, I'm putting a PVC liner in. But for some reason, for some reason, if you do get any type of leak, there's going to be a weeping, uh, weeping hole that goes up underneath your flange inside there. And you want to make sure it doesn't go to the outside and destroy your wood or your wall or anything like that. You should always have a slope. And here's again uh, photos of the pre-pitch and the shower pan uh, uh, that I poured inside there prior to putting the PVC. 
Then, here is the infamous Sharapan liner. I like Oatly. Oatly makes great products. This is a 40 mil uh, uh, PVC liner, and it is already attached. I went ahead and attached it to the, uh, the, the, the flange, the floor flange uh, for the drain. And then you have to do folding in the corner. Let me show you how the folding goes. I think it's in the next, yeah. So, you actually do this is a proper way, and when you get the, when you get the, um, the floor, the, the liner, it will show you the proper way. So basically, just to, when you do the fold, you just have to make sure none of the fold is downward where water can get inside there for some reason and then actually end up inside your walls and the floor space. And then you have to have a corner dam if you have a door. Any type of a door, um, it's highly recommended that you have a, a door, a, a corner jam inside there. Uh, one of the biggest failures that people have when you're building uh, showers this way when you're doing mud decks and making your own shower and you're pouring concrete and, you ha and you're in a wet area, uh, water will find the, least, the path of least resistance and, that, and, whether that's a, uh, and that's where your door is right there. So water is going to go down your door and it's going to look for cracks and it will get inside those cracks and you'll get mold and mold's a bad, bad thing. So you want to make sure that you have this right here. And there's a special type of uh, uh, PVC cement that will do PVC to PVC, there's all kinds. But all we has that for these corner dams. And here's another picture of the corner dam and the fold. So, and that, that's actually a better picture of the fold. So you can see water cannot get out. It's basically you're making a little pool inside there. And this is a picture of me putting up the, uh, the perma base. And that's basically a cement board. And a cement board that uh, uh, it's, not, it's not like... Uh, uh, sheetrock inside your house uh, because sheetrock if you get wet it will deteriorate and disintegrate and this is concrete this is actually it's got concrete mixed in it's got portland cement inside and it has a web mixture inside uh uh to hold it all together and this is what your wall is going to be made of <clears throat> some people are going to say oh what about i heard about vapor barriers and stuff like that well you, there's two ways that you can actually uh waterproof your uh your your shower and uh, I'm going to show you the way I did it, and there's another way, and that where, but the way I did it is, I believe, is the preferred uh, method, and uh, you'll see nothing. You're not going to get any water, and you're not going to have any problem with uh, a vapor barrier inside your, inside, your, inside your walls. Oh, and I showed you the little niche that, that was a niche that I was installing inside there. So anyway, and here it is with the, uh, the diverter uh, cover installed. And what I want to emphasize something here. It's very, very important, uh, and I think I might have a close-up of the diverter somewhere later on. I might have a note. You want to be very careful when you're putting your valve inside there. Uh, it will come with instructions, and it will tell you, because you've got to calculate. You've got to calculate how deep it is inside the wall. You've got to calculate whatever size of your, like your permabase uh, cement wall that you're putting on top of it. And then any thin set, and then any tile. You need to calculate all these things together before you uh, uh, you install this valve inside here, this diverter valve, because if you do it uh, too little or too much, either you're not going to have enough to connect your your all your valve, your hardware fixtures on the outside, or it's going to be the opposite, which is going to be really bad. Is it's going to stick out so far, and it's going to be it's going to look really really bad. And I've seen some horror stories when I did my research on that. And there's the two cutouts for the shower head and the handheld. And I will let you know all the all the uh, plumbing I did f uh, was using PEX. Uh, PEX is uh, it's like the PPR. It looks like the PPR, but it's flexible hose, and there's a clamp that goes on, and you buy a calibrated uh, a tool uh, that clamps on a uh, a metal clamp that goes on there. And what you do, uh, you actually make sure that it comes with a um, a little a little tool uh, a measurement device make sure that you have the correct pressure when you do each one of your connections uh, PEX to PEX or PEX to uh, like uh, brass or copper or anything like that oh here's, here's that note be very careful to get the depth uh, is correct I, I thought I had that inside there and this is the permit base installed uh, on the outside of the shower and and then you'll put this joint tape on there and it just runs like tape, and what you're going to do, you're going to put thin set on there because this is actually cement, and it's not like the stuff that you, it's not the stuff that you put on your. It's applied similar, but it's not like the stuff that you put on your sheetrock. In the U.S., we have sheetrock for the walls. In uh, the Philippines, here we are going to have the plaster coat that goes over ours. 
uh, but it's going to be very similar to the gypsum. Uh, the, the, it doesn't matter whether you're doing gypsum like we're going to be using for our ceilings or whether it's going to be sheetrock. It, it's all basically joint. It's like a joint compound. It's just going to be different materials that you use. And since this is a wet area where you're using permabase, uh, we're going to be using a thin set inside of here over that. And this is the, a shower curb, and I cheated here. Some people actually do this without using this, uh, but I bought this on Amazon, and it gives you a preset slope so that you have water going back. If you're a professional uh, masonry type of a person and you're doing this on a day-by-day -day basis, they don't use this. They'll make a concrete uh, um, uh, curb inside there, and then they'll... they'll They'll uh, use a little trowel, and they will get the uh, the curb to the correct angle. But this helps you get an exactly perfect angle on there, and that's what I use inside here. So you just put it over the PVC uh, that's part of your curb inside there, and then you'll fill that with uh, with cement. And this is the completed job. This is the uh, completed job with the cement installed, and with the uh, the cement actually installed with another set of those uh, those little cheater. Uh, angles that go from the wall all the way down to the drain and uh, they work very very good and you see it's it this is all completed and uh, we're gonna wait for it to uh, to dry and this is other angles so you can see what it looks like and then my wife wanted some place she wanted a quarter bench so she could shave her legs and things like that when we get old maybe we want to sit down sit down every now and then and wash our bodies stuff like that but quarter bench is a cool so this is actually the, the corner bench base, and I ordered this over on Amazon. And that part information, all you have to do is copy and paste that information, or type it in, and if you're interested in doing something like this yourself. It's basically an aluminum pan. It is, you drill into the, uh, to the walls, into the studs, you mount it, and then you put your cement inside there as well. And then it will be covered uh, with a granite top and travertine for trim along the edge. Uh, and to the right, you'll see that's what the wall looks like with all the uh, the thin set over the tape. So it becomes one complete uh, uh, install of concrete. And this is my favorite waterproofing, Red Red Guard. Red Guard is my favorite. This, it comes by different types of names, different brands and stuff like that. But this is my favorite. And uh, this is what I was saying, so that you don't have to do put up uh, plastic behind your uh, uh, your perma base or anything like that. To create a vapor barrier between your outside wall and your inside wall through the studs. That's what some people do, and they don't even do this. They they let their uh, uh, their tile and their thin set. They trust that to be their barrier between the outside wall and the inside wall. I don't trust that. This is probably one of the best technologies right here, and it's a waterproofing membrane. Uh, and you you paint it on. You use a roller, and you paint it on just like you would normally do regular painting and uh, recommended two coats of this right here. And then here's the beginning of the tile. This is the, uh, I, I used the subway tile. Uh, so uh, this is a porcelain subway tile and the design that I got in the back of my mind was go from the floor and only the back wall and go up and we're going to use uh, different ceramic tiles for the front and the back of the shower and you'll see that as we go along. And this is the beginning of doing all the travertine. Uh, the travertine tile inside here that's good. This is actually for the uh, the door frame. And then I, ha I have travertine in different places inside here, but this is mainly for the door frame. Uh, then I installed marble for the thre threshold, uh, for the shower window frame, and also uh, for the step up for the curb. And you'll see that when we get to that portion right there. And this is one of my favorite products, the Schluter uh, Dietra. Uh, the Dietra is an uncoupling membrane. When I say uncoupling, if you have any type of a uh, wall that's not stable, or even a floor that's not stable, like this is plastic on the back of this right here, and if you have something like that, anything that might shift from earthquakes or anything like that, uh, you want you want an uncoupling membrane. What it does, it provides a it provides a, a buffer, like a shock absorber, between a uh, unstable area, or or even wood. Like if you're using wood for the, the a flooring or something like that and a tile, something that you don't want to be moving around and you use the, the feature for that. This is one of my favorite pro products right here. And then you see I, I designed it also, not only did I use the back wall and the floor for the, uh, for the subway tile, I did it for the inside of my niche and, uh, and I did the trim on the inside, I used travertine. Uh, and then I, f I found this really neat Turkish uh, framing material right here. 
Uh, and it's waterproof. It's all waterproof uh, framing material, and I use that for the outside framing of the niche. And then now I'm starting to do the ceramic tile. Uh, I hope it was complementary of the subway tile. And I found some other Turkish trim to use, go around my windows and the area around uh, where the shower head's going to be, the front of the shower. Oh, I don't know if you saw up above. <laughs> Let's go back a second. You see up above, that's actually, uh, it's, uh, I use chair rail for a crown uh, on the very top of the inside of the shower. And I found this neat travertine uh, corner shelf. Uh, and I actually got this on Amazon. If, you, if you're interested in doing this yourself too, I gave you the, uh, the part number and you can cross-reference that if you're interested. And there is the granite top. I went to a local uh, stone workshop and uh, gave them the dimensions, had them cut it, had them seal it, and, and do the, uh, the edging on it so it's nice and rounded. And for the front of the shower, I decided I wanted a, a decorative feature inside there. So my feature is a stone and glass a backsplash. And I got that from Lowe's. And uh, here we have the, again, what I was telling you about before, the marble uh, for the, uh, for the, um, for the walk, for the doorway as you're going through into the, uh, into the shower. And also I, I got this composite material, uh, it, it's like composite wood, but sort of like fiberglass and everything like that, and it's all water resistant. And you really want water resistant stuff as much as possible inside a bathroom anywhere. It, it's really not good to have a lot of wood inside there because it can get moisture inside and you can get mold. And I, I custom designed this, and it's actually, that crown is three, three pieces. And this is the Windows. I actually ordered these windows, uh, this glass, out of, out of a place in Washington State. And it's tempered glass, but it's a tempered glass. Uh, uh, and the, the model is called Sapphire because tempered glass itself has, it inherently has a tint, like a greenish tint. You don't notice it looking directly on so much, uh, but there's a little bit of a tint. And if you look sideways, if you actually look sideways down the glass, uh, you'll see it looks green. And uh, what I want, I wanted the clearest. I wanted something so clear. And I will tell you, I ordered this. It's called Sapphire. And it is clear. It is perfectly clear. And I'll tell you how perfectly clear it is. I actually put my hand through it one time because I thought it was open. And I almost broke my fingers going through there. So uh, it, that's how clear this is. And uh, it's very good quality. And uh, I installed, uh, similar to the trim on the inside, I got the, uh, the, and the, uh, for, the for the crown or the pointish. On the top, I got a Turkish share rail that I put around here. What we're going to do is we're going to put, as you can see in the right section, we're going to put the, uh, uh, the stone and the glass backsplash for the top half for accent uh, decorative feature, and we'll put tile on the bottom half. And you see I also use the, uh, the Ditra uh, for the back of the uh, backsplash. And there's two reasons for that. One is for stability. And the second reason, the main reason, is I needed a way to bring it out a little bit because the, the, the decorative back, backsplash is a little thinner uh, than the tile and the, uh, the thin set for that area, so it will be even across the board. Now, I ripped up the old, there was linoleum inside there. I hate linoleum. So I ripped up all the linoleum and uh, I put a, uh, this a M4 radiant, uh, uh, it's a, it's, you basically roll this out, it's got the elements inside there. Uh, you use uh, a modified uh, thin set, the polymer modified thin set. You put it down, then you put poly the mod polymer modified thin set on top of it. And then you put the Dietra on top of that. And there's reasons be between modified and unmodified. And it has to do with uh, when, you, when you close things up, the, the rate that you want, the, the moisture to... Uh, uh, to uh, to dry and things like that. So uh, and there's other reasons. You can look up the difference between modified and unmod un unmodified uh, thin set. There's all kinds of references out there. And and then let's see. So I got that down. So we're gonna have a heated floor uh, on the left. You see, I have a couple of probes going through. For some reason, after you put all the stuff down, you don't want to rip it up again. And there has been time before where people have installed these and then the probe didn't work and then they had to rip it all up. So it's highly recommended that you put two probes inside there in the event that one probe doesn't work. Uh, so I had a backup. But the first probe I put in there worked fine. I didn't have a problem. 
And you see I put down the, uh, the tile floor inside there, and you can see the Honeywell. That's a Honeywell uh, uh, thermostatic control programmed uh, uh, thermostat that goes inside there. So I have basically, I have that set uh, in the morning for an hour, hour and a half to, to have the floor nice and warm. Even in South Carolina, it gets, uh, it gets pretty chilly during the wintertime. And so it, it's nice and toasty in the morning and in the evening when we're getting ready to take a bath and, and uh, go to bed, it's nice and warm. And then we, turn, we, we just turn it off during the summertime because you don't really need it during the summertime. And now, this is the toilet flange. When you're elevating your floor with more thin set and more tile, it's going to be higher. So chances are your existing uh, toilet flange is not going to work uh, or it's not going to be high enough. And you can put all your putty, you know, you go inside, you get the wax that goes inside, and you can stack your wax and things like that. But sometimes even that's not, and to avoid the chance of doing, uh, getting leaks and, and problems with that, it's better to go ahead and do a flange extension. That's what I did. Uh, and this is the installation of the tempered glass door and the shower hardware. So you see, uh, and it fit perfectly. It fit, per and that laser level uh, that laser plum that I used, uh, it, it was worth every cent to get this thing in perfect. Uh, but make sure you read the instructions when you, when you buy these glass doors. Uh, and and you, uh, you have to think, it's like a chess game. You have to be so many steps ahead uh, for the, you have to estimate how much thin set am I going to use? What's the thickness of my, that travertine uh, uh, door, or, uh, that tile that I had around the framing inside there? Uh, all these things you have to take into consideration before you purchase that uh, that glass door. And uh, this is me installing all the the rest of the tiles for the outside wall, outside the shower. Oh, and, oh! And did you see? Let me go back. Did you see? I put a I put a handrail inside here. That's a very good thing to do, especially if you have elderly people inside your house. And uh, one day I'm going to be elderly. Not yet. So anyway, I, I installed that as well. And I installed the towel rack. Uh, we can put towels on the top and also hang, handle the towels. Oh, and uh, I didn't mention it earlier, but I, uh, my uh, floor drain, I like square. I don't like the round floor drain, so I installed a, a squ square floor drain inside there. And you see to the right with the, all the, uh, the grout down. And I used epoxy, epoxy grout, and we'll talk about epoxy grout here in a minute. And here are the additional uh, niches. I put niches on both sides of the, the vanities, so both sinks have, have niches. And also on the back where your head would be inside the garden tub. And uh, I did the installation of the, uh, the, the, the new toilet. And the new toilet, I also installed a bidet. Uh, some, some places call them washlets. Some places call them bidets. Uh, but this is a big thing in Japan. And my wife lived 15 years in Japan. And she got me hooked on these things. It's, they're very clean and very sanitary. And I really like those. Uh, so I had to install a GFCI uh, outlet uh, for the, uh, the back of the, uh, the toilet so it has electricity to be able to operate. And I installed a uh, plantation shutters. Uh, I ordered this, had it uh, uh, custom made for the, uh, for the garden tub. So the top, we will get natural sunlight and since our neighbor has a two-story also, if we had it uh, so the, the top and the bottom are independent of, for the louvers that are inside there. Uh, so we always have natural sunlight coming in from the top, and we have privacy on the bottom set of the louvers inside there. And uh, this is it. This is the completed uh, bathroom renovation. Uh, and we'll just go through a few pictures of what it looked like after it's all said and done. Oh, I didn't say it earlier, but you see on the corners of everything, uh, I used, and it's made by that Schluter company also, uh, it's, the, it's, it's aluminum... Uh, uh, oil rub bronze uh, corners inside here, so I have no sharp edges anywhere. The Philippines actually does something similar to that. I haven't seen the, the, the aluminum one, which are very nice, and they use a, it's like a plastic uh, kind of corner, but you want to make sure, if you are building in the Philippines, make sure you do that. It's a safety feature, so you don't get hurt if you bang into uh, any uh, of, of the corners of the house, and you should have some type of a uh, bull nose or something like that on a lot of, on some steps or some type of predictive feature like this on steps as well. So here's the, uh, the, the completed shower and you can see the, uh, the, uh, the features that I have inside there and here is the shower with the shower from a different angle right here and oh you didn't see I put the hook up 
uh, on the right hand side in the top uh, on, the, on the wall of the shower through the through the uh, backsplash uh, stone and glass material. And that's where I hang uh, my towel or a, my bathrobe. And uh, here you can see the niche, you can see the Honeywell thermostat inside there. I uh, installed all new uh, lighting fixtures. You, you, you'll see the lighting fixtures above the, the sinks inside there as well. And you don't see, I, I, I ripped out all of the, the lighting fixtures that they had inside there, and they're all cans. I have cans above the, uh, above the, the garden tub, above the shower, and also inside the center of the bathroom. Uh, so all the fixtures inside there, the lighting fixtures are new. And they also, they're timed, and they're sensors. So when you walk into the shower, you don't even have to push a button. It automatically comes on. And when you leave, so many minutes after you leave the bathroom, all the lights will go off. And we use all LED lights, so we, we're saving money on electricity. Another angle where you can see the other niche. Oh, you didn't see, and also, if you look in the roof, I installed that, it's a, it's a Panasonic Whisper Quiet uh, uh, that it extracts the humidity, and, and, uh, and, and it is Whisper Quiet, you don't even know it's on. You push it, and it's on a timer also, uh, and it will get, any, if there's any like fogging going on with your windows or anything like that, and you literally, you, you, you can barely, barely hit, and they don't offer that over here, I tried to find it. You cannot get that model here in the Philippines. You can't get it on Lazada. Uh, you can't get it anywhere over here. Another angle from on the top of the garden tub, looking down. And you can see I put some candles inside there. So when the uh, wife and I have romantic mm, garden tub um, baths, mm, it's, it's nice. It's very, it's, it's very comfortable, relaxing, and romantic. Another angle. Shower and inside the shower, a little bit better picture of what it looks like with the uh, with the shelf and the and the corner bench and niche and the handrail and the fixtures inside there and a good view looking through. Like I said, it's it that glass is so clear and the bathroom from the, another perspective. The niche behind the garden tub, and I think this is the last one right here. And you can see, and this is an example when you actually uh, for the towel rack inside there. So anyway, uh, that's the end of uh, today's presentation for uh, uh, building inside. Uh, if you if you like doing renovate and kind of pro projects like this, uh, I hope I hope uh, those of you who, I hope it inspires you. And uh, you're uh, thinking now in your mind, ah, well, if James can do it, I can do it too. Of course, anybody can do the kind of projects. Uh, just get some preparation and uh, ask questions. And I did that. I went online to uh, on uh, YouTube and I asked questions with professional plumbers. It is here's a there's a multitude of resources out there. Well, anyway, that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode uh, of the special Sunday edition. And uh, if you did, please uh, give me a thumbs up. And please share. And if you have not subscribed, uh, please subscribe. And that's just click on the uh, little My PI Dream Heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. So until tomorrow, which is going to be Build Day, I think it's Build Day 82, if, I'm, if, I, if I recollect properly, uh, out at Villa Feliz, uh, you have a wonderful Sunday.